Hello. So today we are going to know how a rainbow is formed. Which are the phenomena okay, involved in the formation of rainbow? Okay. So let's see. Basically, there are two phenomena involved in the formation of a rainbow. We learn both the two, and then we are going to combine them. Right. So let's see. Uh, we have dispersion of light. And the second phenomena which is involved is the it is a total internal reflection. Total internal reflection. So these are the two phenomena involved in the formation of rainbow. So first we are going to understand these, then we will talk about the rainbow formation. So dispersion of light. If you take a prism, how is it? Yes, it is like a glass material in the form of triangle. So if you take a prism and hit a white light, incident a white light on that, what will happen? Yes, because of refraction and white light contains seven colors already, right from violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red, all the colors and all have different wavelengths. So they will bend, will refract at different angles. So here they get refracted at different angles. So in this way, what you find is the spectrum is right from violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and what? And red. So here basically violet which has the least wavelength, it bends to the maximum angle. And in case of red, it has the greatest wavelength of all, of all the seven, it bends to the minimum angle. So this phenomena of splitting of white light into the seven components which it contains is called what? Yes, it is called dispersion of light. So this is one phenomenon. And what is the group called? It is called spectrum, right? So here, uh, Total internal reflection. If you talk about total internal reflection, what is that? You need to know about refraction of it. What is refraction? Yes, when light enters from one medium, suppose I talk about air, to another medium, suppose I talk about water. So when light enters from one medium to another, or when light changes its medium, what happens? Yes, it bends from its original path. And what is that bending called? What is that bending called? It is called refraction, right? So, by this phenomena, here we can see one more thing that when light enters from rarer to denser medium, air is a rarer medium here, and water is a denser medium. So, when light enters from rarer to denser medium, what happens? It bends towards the normal. This is normal to the surface, right? So, it bends towards the normal. So it can bend on both the sides, here also and here also. It bends towards the normal, not away from the normal. And what happens when light enters from denser to rare medium? If I make the another interface, water to air, what happens there? Yes, there it is entering from denser to rare medium. And yes, there, what will happen? Suppose this is that light and this is the normal. Here it can go straight in this way, but it bends away from the normal. It bends away from the normal in this way. But this was the normal, no? it was bending away from it. So we can see two things. When it enters from rarer to denser, it bends towards the normal and when it enters from denser to rarer, it moves away from the normal. But this is just a refraction. Okay. If I am talking about total internal reflection, what is that? What is the condition for that? Let's see. So if I have light entering from denser to rarer medium, suppose denser to rarer medium, light entering from denser medium to rarer medium, okay. So here, 
Suppose this is water and here it is air. What will happen if light comes here? Yes, it will bend away from the normal, right? What if I increase, this is what, this is angle of incidence, right? The angle which the incident ray makes with the normal is called angle of incidence. And the angle with the refracted ray makes with the normal is called what? Angle of refraction, right? So if I go on increasing the angle of incidence in this way, what is going to happen is the angle of refraction is also going to increase. And at one point, what happens is, at one point of angle of incidence, what I can see is the angle of refraction just becomes 90 degree and that angle of incidence is called what? It is called the critical angle. That angle of incidence is called critical angle. And what if I increase the angle of incidence even more? If I increase the angle of incidence even more, what will happen? Yes, the ray which was coming, which was bending in this way, now it will move up. Yes, it is going to reflect, not refract. Okay, it is going to reflect. And this phenomenon is called total internal reflection. So there are two conditions for total internal reflection. First, yes, the light should enter from denser to rare medium. And the second is the angle of incidence should be greater than critical angle. Then the total internal reflection can take place. So let's see the formation of rainbow now. Now what happens is, if we have this water drop, okay, find this is a water drop. Let's assume this is a water drop. And if the light is entering right here, at some angle, yes, that angle is very important. Here, yes, just like a prism, dispersion, yes, here it is dispersion taking place, splitting of light into that seven component, dispersion taking place, and And after that, what at this point? At the another interface, yes, this is water and this is air. Right? Water drop now. So this is water and this is air. So light is entering here from denser to rarer medium. This is the rarer medium, this is the denser medium. Okay, so denser to rarer medium, what happens now? Yes, the condition for total internal reflection. If the angle is a specific angle or more than a specific angle, what will happen? Uh, the and if the condition occurs that the critical angle or the angle of incidence is greater than critical angle at that point, it is not going to refract. It is going to yes, it is going to reflect. Okay. And if the observer is right here, we can see the seven colors of the spectrum coming to flags. So this is how rainbow is formed. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.